So I want to walk you through in the context of racism today as a white girl who's trying to learn and work through this myself. I want to talk you through the questions I have been asking myself to help uncover my personal biases so that I can work through those, address those and figure out the root of them, why I think that way what that means for me, how I need to unpack that so that I can be better and show up better for a community that really needs support right now. Welcome back to Up and Running and Thriving, your weekly spot for inspiration and motivation to help you get your mind, body, and business up and running and thriving. My name is Whitney Abraham, certified faster weight coach and business coach. And today we are going to talk about uncovering bias. Now more than ever, it is so important that we take a good hard look at what's going on inside of each of us so that we can bring our best selves to the table. We can bring our most enlightened, most helpful, most valuable version of ourselves to every interaction that we have. Okay, this is important work, let's dig in. Today, we are overwhelmed with evidence that marginalized populations are struggling in front of us. Even in 2020 today, this is still a problem. And I want you to start taking a look at the ways in which you've inadvertently contributed to that if you are a person of advantage, a person of privilege. Personally, I'm a white woman. I know that I have afforded a lot of things that a lot of people are not afforded, whether it's, you know, socioeconomic status or simply the color of my skin. But the point is, if we're not in tune to the internalized thoughts that present themselves in our minds over and over again, we might be able to sit here and say, I'm not a racist. I, you know, I don't see any different between you and me. I, you know, I don't see your color. We don't understand that that's a dangerous statement. If we had been marginalized for 400 years and then we were told that all of that was erased and that a population didn't see that and how that contributed to our value and our meaning and our work, that would be discrediting to someone, right? So when we say, I don't see color, you know, we think we're being kind. We think we're being inclusive. Um, and unfortunately, bias contributes to that narrative. So I wanna walk you through, in the context of racism today, as a white girl who's trying to learn and work through this myself, I wanna talk you through the questions I have been asking myself to help uncover my personal biases so that I can work through those, address those, and figure out the root of them, why I think that way what that means for me, how I need to unpack that so that I can be better and show up better for a community that really needs support right now. So I hope that you'll understand my heart in these questions and I hope that you'll ask yourself these questions too. Um, these are important things that we need to not ignore. It's our job to ask these hard questions of ourselves so that we can be honest with what's happening in our community and in our lives. Okay, so I want you to start asking yourself some of these questions and write them down. And the point is not to have judgment attached to what those questions are. The point is for it to jar you and wake you up so that you can understand what those conditioned thoughts are. When you walk down the street at night and a black person passes you, what do you think? When you teach your child how to interact with the police, what does that conversation sound like? How might a black mother's conversation differ? Have we ever given pause to think about how a black person's conversation has to sound different? What are the five things that you associate with black culture? This is eye opening, you guys. And again, it's not meant to make you feel bad, but it's meant to make you feel bad. <laughs> you need to ask yourself these questions so that you can uncover where your mind naturally goes when it thinks of someone that's different than you. How would you feel if those five things were associated with you? What would that make you feel like? Again, my point here is not to place judgment. My point here is to open your own eyes to the way that your brain is working without you even knowing it. What was your first reaction to the protest? This is a really good one uh, and I'm bored with this myself. Uh, I think you really have to ask yourself, how did I feel whenever I saw so many people protesting? Did I wanna go protest? Did I not wanna go protest? What did I think about whenever people were breaking windows? What did I think about whenever people were being tear gassed? These are important questions to get your temperature on what's going on inside of you. The follow-up question to this, which I think is so freaking impactful is, what would have to happen in your life to you, to your family, to your community, to get you to a protest? Would it be 400 years of oppression and systemic 
marginalization? Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> what are the last five things that you thought about in conjunction with black people? You guys, it is so important that you ask yourself these questions. These answers give us cues to the work that we need to do introspectively, to our own personal work that needs to be done in order to get to a place where this is no longer a relevant conversation. We are so far from that point right now. And we, have all have, we all have to take ownership right now today. We all have to say, how have I unknowingly or knowingly contributed to this? And what can I do to be a part of the solution? I hope that you found this helpful. I wish you peace and grace and learning as you undo the conditioning that you've experienced in your lifetime. Listen, we are not exempt, not a single one of us. Each of us carries some level of conditioning in some way, and it's our job to undo that work. I love you. We'll talk soon.